How many people want to be hundredfold fruit bearers in the house today? Amen. That's that's my prayer that we move in that hundredfold blessing. Amen. Remember, Jesus said 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. And so we are in a series on the power gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we know that Pentecost Sunday is next Sunday. Praise the Lord. And that's uh, what well, that means. That's 50 days after uh, Jesus um, was resurrected from the cross. And that's when the Holy Spirit fell on the church. Amen. Uh, and that's in Acts 2 when I, I, I have been ministering on that. And I'm going to just say this, um, when we're talking about the power gifts, you know, you got, you got different camps in the church and in the body of Christ, amen? And you have some camps in the body of Christ that would be more logical in the way they think about biblical things and the Word of God. And you have some people that are more logical on the Word of God, amen? They want to, sometimes reason can, can take over faith. And then you have others that are on the other side that, that believe, you know, the word of God, the little word of God, and believe that, the, that we can do what the Bible says that we can do. Amen. And, so, and so we got to, and then you can kind of cross over even to uh, even further though, for those. And some people are, can take an ex excess in some of the spiritual giftings. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully um, I'm ministering where a balanced message where, you know, uh, the gifts can be used. But you have to understand this, that, that whenever there's flesh involved, amen, that, that the gifts are perfect, but people aren't. Amen. You got to understand that. And we're just people. So if we operate in a gift, sometimes we don't do it perfectly. Can I get an amen? And, and, we're, just, and we're, because we're, we're spiritual beings, but we're also natural beings. Amen. And, and, and we're more in the natural a lot of times than in the spirit. Amen. You may say, I beg to differ, Pastor. I walk in the spirit every day. You know, yeah, you probably do. Amen. But now you're, now you're walking in the flesh because you're getting offended. Amen. <laughs> so you, are you hearing what I'm saying today? So if you're getting a little angry, a little mad, you're not in the spirit anymore. You're in the flesh. Unless it's, unless it's righteous indignation, you know, like Jesus driving out the money changers in the church. Amen. That's a little different. And, uh, but, uh, so, so we got to, uh, you got to understand this. And sometimes this topic in the gifts of the spirit, um, makes people nervous because, you know, spiritual things to the natural person are weird. Can, uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's just kind of weird, you know, because we're not used to it. I mean, we want, sometimes we want God to be in a nice little box and we want to put God in a box and, and we, and, and we just don't want God to, to wreck our day with something different. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? I, I like to say wreck our day in a good way. Amen. And so, and so God, uh, this is something, God is a, is a mystery God in a sense. And, uh, and he's a discovery God. You got to understand this about God. God is a mystery God at times, and he's a discovery God. And what I mean by that is that, that you're not going to be able to figure out everything about God. Amen. Even you may have all the scriptures, you're not going to be able to figure it all out. Don't, if you're one of these people that have to figure it all out, then, then you, might as well walk, you might as well be walking in the vanity of your mind because you got to walk by faith and not by sight. So you can't be trying to figure it all out. Like uh, you can't figure God out at times because God can tell you to do something that may not make sense Amen. to the natural mind. He may, he may ask you to give an offering when you're barely making it in your finances. Amen. And to you in the natural mind, that's crazy. That's right. I can barely make it already. But what God is trying to do is set you up for a blessing. Right. See, and so that's where you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Right. And so we're word people. In this church, we, we believe in the word, but you also have to believe in the power of the spirit, too. That's right. Amen. So so it's it's the word of God and the spirit of God agreeing together. Amen. Amen. And so that's what we have to. We have to work with God. And so and so uh, we're, we're talking about power gifts. And, it, it you know, you know, one side of the camp will we'll focus just on the love of God, the fruit of the spirit, which we just came out of. And, and another side of camp may focus more on the spiritual giftings, but we got to have it all. Amen. We got to have the fruit of the spirit. We have to have the gifts of the spirit. And because the giftings will help people. Amen. 
It's not designed a gift. You know, you pray and ask God for a gift. It's not to, um, to put you on a pedestal. It, it, it's to point to Jesus. Right? So if we desire gifts, it's not to inflate our ego, but it's to raise up Jesus. Does that make sense? And, and sometimes there's immature people that can operate in giftings. And that's why some people see these immature people and they seem a little cuckoo at times because they're, they're, not, they're, they're not tempered with the, the gift, with, with the fruit of love. Amen? Amen. Are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying today? Because sometimes we can get, you know, we, we, we're operating a gift and we start, you know, trying to be like a, a peacock and showing all our feathers. Amen? Amen. But that's not this crowd. You guys are a little bit more reserved. Amen? So, so don't get freaked out about these gifts. A lot of times they happen naturally while we're operating day to day. And a lot of times they operate and we're not even aware of it. And so that's how God wants to operate through us. Even it's sort of in a natural way, but in a supernatural way. And we don't even realize it. Sometimes you may say something that may be prophetic and you're not even realizing you're saying that. And you say something and it really affects somebody and just, just changes their whole direction of where they're going. And you may say, why did I say that? Or you may have you know, an intuition or, you know, some people call it intuition, but it may be an unction of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, yeah, have you ever heard this? Something told me this. Yes. Have you ever said that? Something told me to do this. Mm-hmm. Well, it, that something might be the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Sometimes we say, something told me to do this and it worked. Yeah. Well, if it didn't work, then it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Because he will always show you to do something that works. Yeah. If it didn't work, then it was, it was the other something. <laughs> you got it? It was old slew foot. Because he can work too. You know the devil can work in the prophetic? Amen. Amen. I call it the, the uh, uh, yeah, it, it's a false prophetic that he can operate in. I call it the, proth- what is it? The prophetic. Amen. And so, and so you got to be very careful. So today, um, we're going to talk about the, the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to go into it and just put our, our toe into the water a little bit. We're not going to go full blast because it's going to take a few weeks for us to cover all these giftings. And I don't want to go through it so fast and, and then you guys say, okay, let's go to the next uh, series, right? So, so I want you to, uh, as one person that's a cook, marinate on it <laughs> or meditate on it. Amen. Any cooks out here? Amen. So let's look at Acts 1.8. And in Acts 1.8, this is our, our scripture that we've been going with with the series. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, Samaria and the end of the earth. So uh, here Jesus is speaking and he was speaking to the disciples and Jesus wants us to walk in the power. Amen. You know, I was talking to somebody this week and they were talking about a, a, a church that they used to attend. And, and the Lord gave them a revelation that, that the church that they attended um, was more, you know, they kind of ministered more of a social gospel. Okay. And there's a lot of churches that minister a social gospel, it, 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 you know, fellowship gospel, love gospel. But it's more than just a social gospel. It's, it's a power gospel. Yes, amen. Remember what, what Paul said? He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the power of God. Amen. To save people, to transform people, to set people free. So the gospel is powerful. So it's more than just getting people saved and water baptized. Amen. There's more to it than that. And we need to start moving into... My title of my sermon, Moving into the Prophetic. And God wants us moving into the prophetic. Amen. And so like I said earlier, God is a mystery God or he's a discovery God. And he wants us discovering. A lot of times uh, people like in the body of Christ say, what is God calling me to do? I, want, I wonder what God wants me to do. I don't feel satisfied with where I'm at. Where does God? W-? Well, God wants you to listen to him first and foremost and obey his word. If you just do that, just, just, just obey his word. Don't lie, cheat, steal. Right. Amen. Just, you know, obey the Ten Commandments. Amen. Walk in love towards God and people. 
right? The, the, I mean, if you're doing that, you're, you're basically in the will of God. And then he'll move you into, into maybe you'll become a specialist in a body of Christ. You know, God has his specialists, amen? That's people that's raised up to do a certain, that has a certain calling on their life to affect the body in a positive way. And so, and so let's look at Mark 16 and 15. I'm going to just go with this too, because this is really important. And I mentioned this earlier uh, in, in my previous uh, preachings on uh, the, the power gets the Holy Spirit. This is, this is the, uh, the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is in, is in actually two Gospels. And in one Gospel, it talks about, you know, raising up disciples and a lot of people that want to just, they don't want to mess with the power gifts. They just go with that one. But the people that, that really see that God wants us empowered, we, we like the Mark 16, amen, instead of the Matthew one. And because, you know, uh, in Mark 16, 15, and 18, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, now he adds to that. There's more than just ministering the gospel and saying Jesus loves you. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Jesus paid the price. That's awesome and that's good. We want to get people saved. But then Paul goes into it a little deeper. Can we go a little deeper this morning? Amen. Amen. Can we get a little deeper? And so Paul says, he who believes. Underline that if you, if you can underline in your Bible. He who believes. In other words, if you're going to activate the power of God in your life, you got to believe. <laughs> you got to believe. You got to mix some believing with your faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to believe. Do you believe that God wants you to be prosperous? Amen. Say, I believe that. I believe do, you want, do you believe that God wants you healthy? Amen. Say, I believe that. I believe do you believe that God wants you having rich relationships? Amen. That you're getting along with your spouse. I believe that. Yeah. Amen. You're getting along with your kid. You got to believe. Belief is the key. And so you got you to gotta be believe. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. I love that. God's, God's promises us signs. Signs. Anybody ever seen that movie, Signs? Yes. It's a really interesting movie. That person that leaves that water all over the place. And remember that movie, Signs? It, it, it's, a, it's a science fiction movie. Uh -huh. And it's about a, a pastor that lost, that lost his faith mm -hmm. because his wife, I think, died in a car accident and he couldn't save her with his faith. Yeah. And, he, and he left his faith, but he regained his faith back. Yeah, Amen. So, so, so we can, at times in our life, wane in our faith. Amen. In other words, doubt and unbelief starts creeping yes, in. Yes, right. There's times where you may even had it this morning. Amen. Do I want to go to church? Amen. And so there are times. So there are times where we wane in our faith, especially when we're dealing with things that are coming against opposition. Yes. Opposition causes us to wane in our faith. Yes. You know, tests and trials. Yeah, Amen. Right. But we walk by faith and not by sight. sight. Amen? Amen. So even though these things are coming, it might be a sure, um, might be uh, the reason why they might be coming. It may be revealing to us that we are, we are walking with God. Right. If you are encountering some problems. Because the Bible says that we will encounter problems. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're not in a perfect world. Amen. Amen. And uh, so that's why we should be always longing for heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We should not get so used to this world, amen, uh, that you want to stay, stay here, amen. No, I want to get to heaven, amen. And uh, so he says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Now, you know, that, that, that's amazing. That, that is, now, now, in casting out demons... Uh, we're going to go into this, but it, when, you, when you're casting out a demon, um, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, you, you have, the, sometimes you have the gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit operating to help you cast out a demon. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you might say, I don't want to go there, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be casting out any demon. Yeah, but sometimes it just happens. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I mean, when you're following God and you're walking under the anointing, sometimes God doesn't notify you a week ahead of time. You're going to be casting out a demon out of this person because you'd be freaking out if he did. No, what God may do is he may, uh, you know, an uh, opportunity may arise where you're praying for somebody and all of a sudden an unction from the Holy Spirit comes on you and you find yourself casting out a demon. You're like, where did that come from? And the other person gets set free. That's how it happens a lot of times. You're, you, God doesn't just put it in your calendar. That's right. Thank you, Lord. You know, you just pray. You, you, you just make yourself available. But God moves. You make yourself available and God moves. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? I mean, I was, uh, I, I operate in the prophetic, most of the time, sometimes in the pathetic, but hopefully in the prophetic. Amen. And uh, I, I was, um, and, and so I do operate in words of knowledge and, um, uh, and, and, you know, it, it, and that operates in the gift of prophecy. And I had one person ask me for prayer and, and some of the people here know that I operate in these giftings. And, uh, and so sometimes when I pray, the Spirit of the Lord will speak. Now, I don't know ahead of time that he's going to do that. He, it, he does at times and he doesn't. Sometimes I, I have it and sometimes I don't. All right. But that's as the Spirit God of God wills. Amen. It was up to me. I would try to do it all the time. If I could do it all the time by will, my head would be so big you couldn't get me out of those <laughs> double doors. Right. If we could operate in the gifts of the Spirit, we would be like thinking we're God. Do you understand what? There was this one famous evangelist, and he operated in the gifts of the Spirit, and he was so powerfully used of God. And he was operating such great gifts that miracles was happening. And uh, what happened was he said something that wasn't good to say, and he, he was saying that, that I'm getting as great as God. He said that. And when he said that, uh, it, it turned everything around in his life. He ended up becoming a cripple. He was setting people free from being cripples. He, he was raising people up, and he, and he got crippled. Why? Because you can't take God's glory. You, you don't start taking God's glory. In other words, you, but he, he died as a cripple. But this guy walked in the power of God. But see, but see and he was so, so proficient in it that he started thinking that he was all that. And we got to remember that we, we're not all that. God's all that. So, so yes, praise God. And so, and so we, have to, we have to understand that. And, of course, that he, he went to heaven. But, but uh, uh, again, you know, you don't want to end up like that. You want to end up good. So I was praying for this person, and, um, and so they said, oh, uh, and I just said, well, no weapon formed against you. And they said to me, well, is that, is that the Lord talking, uh, talking to you, saying that, that scripture? I said, mm, no, it's kind of me. <laughs> no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm just, it's just, I, it just kind of came to my head, but I don't think it was a prophetically induced scripture. That's right. And then, then that person said, oh, I, I missed it today, and I sinned, and, I, and, I, and, 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 and because they felt like God wasn't speaking to them, right? And as soon as they confessed their sin, all of a sudden, I prophesied over them and gave them a word. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Now, I didn't expect it, and it helped them, and it moved them into a direction, a positive place in God. Thank you, Lord. All right? But sometimes our sin can hinder the voice of God. We don't hear God as clearly, right? And sometimes God wants to get something to us, a positive word, because prophecy, I'm going to be talking to you about tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy today. And, and just the general gift of prophecy is, a, is an encouraging word. It's an uplifting word. It's for exhortation and comfort, right? Edification, exhortation, and comfort. And so it's a, it's a word that should lift you up. So if you got somebody telling you, well, well, the Lord's telling me that you're going to die in a car accident, you know, sometime down the road. I don't know if that's God. God doesn't provoke fear. Does that understand? And sometimes people go to churches that don't really explain these things. And then some people, you know, they, they're, they're young and they're immature and they're walk with Christ. And, and, and they, they think they're operating in the prophetic when they're operating in the, pro, what's the other word? Prophetic. <laughs> Amen. And, and in other words, it's coming out of their heads instead of coming out of their hearts. Amen. 
And so we're going to talk about this today uh, in, in deeper. And it says, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. So, so a lot of times, you know, uh, these giftings operate when we're doing uh, the kingdom business. Amen. And so he said, you'll cast out demons. And, uh, and, this is, and then you'll take up serpents. You drink anything, anything, it won't hurt you. And then you'll, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But, uh, but let me back it up. I, I, I skipped this. And you shall speak with new tongues. So, so he says here, these signs, you speak with new tongues, uh, you lay hands on the sick, and you'll cast out demons. Th those, are, those are pretty amazing things. Amen? Yeah. And, and we talked about speaking in, in, in new tongues. It's not that when you get saved that, that you're, you're, you, you quit cursing, which God can help you to quit cursing, yeah. drop in the F-bombs and all that. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we may have some weaknesses when we get upset. We may end up doing that. But we should repent if we do. Amen. Ask God to forgive us. Yeah. And if you don't listen to people dropping F-bombs all the time on what you're watching, you probably won't. Okay, we will continue. I'm, I'm meddling now. I'm meddling. And uh, whatever you partake of, you're going to end up oh, you're out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth leaks. I mean, the mouth speaks, right? <laughs> Amen. And so, and so let's continue here. So let's look at 1 Corinthians because it's interesting to me that the Apostle Paul has almost like three chapters basically on the gifts of the Spirit, mainly two. And, uh, and in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says here, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. So, so he doesn't want us to be ignorant. In other words, we should. We got the Bible. We got Bible apps. You can. Your Bible can actually read back to you. Amen. Do you know that? You're, I got Bible apps that can read the King Elizabeth English. Yeah. I love that. You know that the the the, 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 the guy that speaks in King Elizabeth. Uh, you ever listen to that guy? Yeah. You know, and and it, it's really nice sounding. He's English and he has that English accent. Amen. Put you to sleep in about five minutes. Amen. And so it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you Gentiles were carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. What do you mean by dumb idols? He's not saying stupid idols. He's saying idols that cannot speak. Right. See, God speaks. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so he says here, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is very powerful scripture here because um, if, uh, you know, if you're operating in the prophetic and you're operating in God, you can't say that uh, he's saying that if the Spirit speaking uh, cannot say Jesus is accursed. Amen. Uh, uh, so, 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 uh, so the spirit doesn't, uh, the wrong spirit doesn't want to say that Jesus is exalted or, uh, there's another place in the Bible that says that, that the, uh, that the wrong spirit may be on a person, uh, and they can't say that Jesus has come in the flesh. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's kind of a way you test. Yeah. Can you say Jesus come in the flesh? Yeah. Because the wrong spirits don't want to admit that Jesus came into the flesh, right? So they won't say that. That's a way of testing spirits sometimes. Amen? Are you listening to what This is a little deeper. We're going a little deeper today. Amen? And you say, well, I, don't, I just have natural life. Yeah, but God may be moving you into a more of a supernatural life. And, and I'm telling you, it's really needed in the body of Christ. Amen? And so he says here, Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And no one can say that, that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I love that. So if you can't say Jesus is Lord, there might be something wrong. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because some people that are under demonic oppression, have, they may not, if they're not saved... They may not say Jesus is Lord. Matter of fact, I was witnessing to one person one time and they were a Jehovah witness. Yeah. Who's seen that accident? No, no, we'll keep going. That's a joke. But they were a Jeho Jehovah witness, like a witness for an accident. Okay, we'll continue. Come on, people work with me. And um, gosh, and uh, say I'm quick, I'm sharp. <laughs> I'm good looking, amen, and I'm a major blessing. Amen. 
<laughs> and so uh, I haven't seen that accident. That's just an old Jehovah Witness uh, joke. Amen. Um, so, but, but a Jehovah Witness, you know, they're not Christians. Right. Right. They don't have Christian theology. They, they talk a lot, may talk about Jesus, but their theology is totally different. And the way they use their words are different. Amen. And they base their faith on works. Right? right? On works, right? Yeah. And so we base our faith on faith in Jesus. Right. We worship Jesus. Jesus is not the brother of Lucifer. <laughs> you know? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus is in a whole different category. Yeah. He's the Son of God. Yes. The Word incarnate. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. Baby. You know? yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus. The buck stops at Jesus. Amen. And he's worthy of worship. He, he, he's not no brother of Lucifer. Amen. Where do they get that in the Bible? Amen. They, my Lord Jesus. But you got to stay on the word. If you don't stay on the word, you'll, get, you'll fall for any lie. Amen. And so, and so where was I at here? Thank you. I was witnessing to Joe. And I said to her, I said, can you say Jesus is Lord? She said, I don't have to say that. I don't have to say, I said, you, you can't say Jesus is Lord. Oh. I said, and, and, and I was just letting her know that if you can't, you know, say that, then, you know, Jesus isn't your Lord and the Jehovah Witness faith is not right. And she says, you, you're, you're messing, you're, you're, you're messing my faith up. And she got all nervous. Now I was at the bank and I was doing, I was doing some business and she was the, the banker, one of the bankers. So I, so I had Liberty. Because she has to be nice, right? So I could, you know, kind of witness to her a little bit because I'm the customer. Customer's always right, right? And so, and so she couldn't really be rude to me, but she was like, I'm not gonna. She was, she was shaken up. Why? Why? We're called to shake some people up. You're called to shake some of these unbelievers up. You want to, you want to get them shaken a little bit, like a leaf. You know, you want, you know, you start talking about Jesus, people get nervous. They don't want to hear about Jesus, amen, because they know that, you know, he's the judge. You know, Jesus is the judge. Amen. He's going to be judging mankind that, that, that day, amen. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus is the judge. All judgment the Father has put in Jesus' yeah. hands. Why? Because he, was flesh, he is flesh and blood and bone, amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He, he was one of us. So who's better to judge us than one of us? Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? See, that's why it's hard for me to get through these messages. I got all these fillers in here. Amen. Amen. But it's good fillers. It, it, it's building your faith up because you guys are warriors in God. Say, I'm a warrior in God. Amen. And so he says here uh, in verse 4, um, so, so it says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So, so what he's saying is there's different types of gifts, but the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. There are diff different of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities and activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. In other words, what, what he's saying is, is God can work in a lot of different ways. Yes. God can anoint you in a lot of different ways. Yes. Amen. And, and, God can, and it's God that does these things. Yes. You know, and, and you may have a particular gift, a natural gift or a gift in an area. This is aside from spiritual gifts that, 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 um, that comes natural to you. Speaking might come natural to you. You know, writing might come natural to you. You got giftings, you know, fixing things can come natural to you. You just, you just know how to fix things. And that might be a gifting that God's moving you into, you know, plus with the other gifts of the spirit while you're doing that. Amen. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber. He loved plumbing, but, but he would let his light shine while he was plumbing. Amen. And so it says here, but eventually God moved him into full-time ministry. And you're going to say, and you're probably saying, no, not, not me, pastor, not me in a full-time ministry. Hey, don't ever say not me. Amen. Cause God may be calling some of you in full, full-time ministry. What? Yeah. And it says here, and there are diversities, uh, uh, activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So we understand this, that Paul is saying that these gifts of the Spirit should not be left out of the church 
they should be involved in the church to help the church grow. Right. right? To help us move to the... See, God wants us... See, listen, God always wants us moving forward. Right. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? He doesn't want us going backwards. Right. So in our faith, if your faith is stagnant this morning, it's a possibility that you're not moving forward in your faith. You, you're just kind of sitting still. And see, a sitting still is an easy target for the devil. Yes, right. it, see, it's, it's hard for the devil to hit something. It's, it's hard for anybody to hit anything moving. So, so when we're moving forward, the devil has a hard time attacking us. But when we're sitting still, we're sitting ducks. Is this helping anybody? That's why we've got to keep moving forward. Look at your neighbor and say, move forward. Amen. So, so hopefully these, these messages will help us move forward. Amen. So it says here, uh, and uh, verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm, I'm reading all these giftings here. But, and you may say, well, I don't see it operating in the church. Well, it is operating. We, you don't see it all the time. A lot of times when people come up for prayer, it's, it, it's operating. And every once in a while, I may prophesy out here after worship, you know, after we do, after we praise and worship God, God may have a word for the church. Amen. So it does operate. And, uh, but but it, it's going to be operating much more because you guys are listening and believing. And why do you want it to operate? Because you want the church to be built up. Yes. You want to move forward. Yes. So it says, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. For the body is one and has many members, but all the members of the body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, we all have been made to drink into one spirit. Amen. I just thought I'd just read that because I could just read this whole Bible. Amen. And I love it. And, uh, and because we should always be seeking truth and we should always be seeking knowledge of God's word. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so he goes into these, the, these, these lists of gifts. And so uh, some theologians has broken down the gifts of the spirit uh, in... Uh, you know, uh, categories. And so there's nine gifts of the Spirit, okay? And so you can actually uh, break them down into, into categories, amen? And so, and so we have to look at this, that you have three different categories, and one is called the revelation gifts. And, that's, and, and these gifts reveal something, amen? There's also another... Uh, and, and the revelation gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. And these gifts reveal something. How many people want something, you know, God to reveal you some truth? Amen. How about if you're going in a direction that's not good, don't you want God to reveal that to you? Yes. It, have you ever been trying to get to a place uh, and you're trying to find a place that you've never been to and you were going the wrong way? Yes. And aren't you thankful that you have the GPS that helps you go the right way? Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit is our GPS. Amen. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will reveal sometimes when we're going the wrong way so we can go the right way. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? So the word of, of wisdom, the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits, these are really great gifts. And, you know, they work all together. Right. Yeah. A lot of these giftings work like, kind of kind of like your hand. You know, you, 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 you know, you can pick things up with two fingers like that. Amen. Or you can pick them up with your whole hand. Right. And, and so the gifts of spirit kind of work independently, but they work with each other. That's right. So, so it's kind of difficult to, to explain that. But the word of knowledge can work in prophecy. So when you're given a prophetic word, a word of knowledge may go forth in a prophetic word. So now you're operating in a revelational gift. And, that, and what you're doing in, in, in a word of knowledge, you're really, you're stating uh, uh, where that person may have been at. 
where he came from, what's going on in his heart and his mind at this time. It reveals the person's heart. Amen. That's a great gift. Amen. Now, sometimes it, does, sometimes it can operate through a tongue and an interpretation. I sometimes operate in a tongue and then I give an interpretation. And, sometimes I, and the interpretation is not a word-for-word -word translation. That's why a tongue could be long and the interpretation could be short. Amen. It's interpreting the mind and the will of God in a particular situation. That's why you, a person is, is searching how God, what, what God is trying to say. It, it's like the intent of God's heart in that situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, so, and so when you operate in this gift, you can operate by just giving a word of knowledge out or you can operate by speaking a tongue and then interpreting your tongues and that becomes a word of knowledge to the person that's listening. Mm -hmm. is that, is that, does that help you any? This is really good because you may have a question. And you've been having this question in your heart. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit may answer that question. Are you listening? Amen. And you're like, praise God. Amen. I have been having this question, you know, about, you know, you know, like that one minister I said before, Norval Hayes. Asked the pastor, why did God kill his mom of cancer? And the, and, the, and the minister said, got the word of knowledge. Maybe, maybe, maybe been a word of knowledge, but, but it came back with, a, with an awesome word. It wasn't, the, it wasn't God that killed your mother. It was that unbelieving church that she was attending. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, they weren't preaching miracles. They, they were preaching God does everything. He puts cancer on you. If you die of cancer, that's God's will. That's not God's will. Amen. With long life, I will satisfy you. And show you my salvation. But you hear ministers preach like this. And when they do, I go, ugh. I know that's right. You know, but they do have some truth. And you don't want to you don't want to just stiff arm the people that, that have some that they have ignorance. They're, they're, they do have some truth, may have more truth than me in some other areas. So you don't have to just ditch them because they're not they're ignorant in that area. But they may be smart in some other areas. Amen? But again, what I'm saying is, you know, that could have been a word of re uh, revelation knowledge. You know, Jesus operated in all these gifts. I'm going to say this. The Bible is a prophetic book. That the, Bi the, the Bible is based on prophecies of the Old Testament coming to pass in the New Testament. It's a very prophetic book. And these prophecies were men and women of God that was moved upon to speak God's word and these prophecies are coming to pass even today. Amen. That's why you got a lot of people who are in the... And I think I'm going to do a, a series on the end times. Anybody want to... No, nobody wants to know about the, the mark of the beast and all that. Yeah, amen. amen. Yeah, but, but, you know, the end times, because we're entering... The, we're in the end times. Amen. One world government. Yes. One world currency. Bitcoin. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I don't know about that, but are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? Some people think that, you know, but, but no, it, it, it's going to be, uh, listen, you don't have to worry about the beast, the antichrist and all that, because you guys are going to be up in heaven when all that's happening. Because Jesus is coming back. He has a rescue mission plan and he's going to pull us out because all hell is going to break loose once the Christians are out of here. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? We're going to be out and they're going to say, aliens, we got to put the mark on everybody because, because we don't want you disappearing so we can track you, right? So when the church goes, that's my theory, that's when everybody's going to buy into the mark, right? Because, because all the good people are out of here. So all the people are going to say, oh, give me a mark. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So, so, so they can track you, right? Because they're going to say, well, all these other people that didn't get the, 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 the tetanus shot, I mean, the, uh, the, the coronavirus shot, those people, they're, at, you know, the aliens took them, you know. You know, you, you, know, you hear what I'm saying to you today? So when we're out, that's when every, all hell's going to break loose. So be at peace. Be comforted. Now, you know, one, one of my members, a couple of my members took the shot. And uh, he, he, he said, I took the shot. I said, you got more faith than I do, you know. <laughs> but, and, they, and they said, I got, I got no side effects, everything. But I, how come there's a horn growing out of your head? No, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> What's that horn growing out of here? But I, no, I, I'm okay with the shot. Don't, don't, I mean, I, I, it's not for me. Everybody to their faith, whatever you believe, it's good for you. You know, I'm not condemning anybody that has a shot. You got more faith than me. I, I just, I don't have the faith for it. I'm just going to stand and just believe that it's going to, that, I, that I'm not going to be affected. Amen? Amen? I had, um, and so it's good. It's, it, there's no condemnation. I mean, Amen. praise God. Amen. Um, uh, but I would like to get one. If you guys did get the shot, can I get my name on that certificate? Remove that name off so I can be, no, I'm kidding. But uh, you guys get like a little certificate, right? It's a little badge of honor. And uh, so I was um, going to uh, the club, the health club, and there was this guy out there and said, and said, have you had your coronavirus shot? And I'm like, I said, I'm just going in to work out. What's, why are you bothering me, man? And I, I said, no, I said, no, I, I, I haven't. He said, are you going to get it? And I said, no, I, I'm a healthy guy. I'm going to be all right. He said, I hope you stay healthy. And I don't know if he was getting money for everybody that gets a shot or whatever. But I was surprised. There was some guy out there in front of the health club trying to, trying to ask me if I wanted to get the shot. I didn't know if he was going to pull out a syringe <laughs> or what. I said, I do, you know, hey, man, I'm good. You know, I don't know. I didn't know. I just said, hey, back off. Back off. Oh, you're out. And he got a little testy with me. Like, you think you're too good for the shot. No, I, I, no, I just don't want it. Thank you very much, you know. Uh, that, that's not for me, amen? amen. And, uh, man, you, you're learning a lot about Pastor Dave, amen? Yes. And so, and so the, the, the gift of, of the word of knowledge works uh, hand in hand with other giftings. And I've got to close this down because I promised my wife I wasn't going to go as long as I normally do. Because we got next week, amen? Yes. And so we, we know this, that it has operated in the Old Testament, giving future events even today. Uh, there's, a, there's a prophetic scripture. You could say, well, how do you know there is God? there's a God? And you know there's a God because Israel exists today. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Israel became a nation in 1948. And the Bible says that I will make a nation in a day. And they didn't have a place anymore. They were a dispersed people. And, tell, and I want to ask you this. How many people that were dispersed uh, in history came back as a nation? How many nations came back? Not many. Only Israel. And the Bible had a prophetic word that God was going to draw everybody back to Israel. And that there was going to be a nation. Right? And this was prophetic. And God promised, uh, you know, Israel, uh, he's promised that land to the Jewish people. Yes. Through the Abrahamic blessing. Yes. Amen. It belongs to the Jews. Uh -huh. Ooh, this could be controversial. Oh my gosh, if a Muslim hears this, I might be on the hit list. But anyway, we'll continue. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? My Lord Jesus. No, some people don't want to say this. Oh my God, my house is going to be burnt down next week. Amen. No, I got, I got warring angels protecting me and my family. So, so hit me with your best shot. Fire away. Okay. Um, that's, an, that's an old song. Uh, who was that? Anyway. Pat Benatar. Somebody, thank you. Hit me with your best shot. <laughs> I tell you, when you get bold in God, you start saying to the devil, hit me with your best shot. And he does. He says, stop it, please. No. Yeah, we'll continue. Um, anyway, we'll continue. So the word of knowledge is a good word of knowledge. And so we know this, that, that Jesus operated basically in all the gifts. There's only two gifts in the Old Testament that, that is not mentioned in the nine gifts of the Spirit, and that's tongues and, and, and uh, interpretation of tongues. All the other seven were, were mentioned, and that was operated in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Now, in the New Testament, we have the we're in a new dispensation with tongues and interpretation of tongues, which equals prophecy. You got it. You have those two gifts working together to make prophecy, or you can prophesy just under the unction of God without the tongues. And and but tongues, and interpretation of tongues, uh, work together, right? And you got three gifts: tongues. And you're interpreting tongues, then you have prophecy. Yeah. Amen? And so, and so when, when Jesus was here, he operated in these gifts. So in, in Luke chapter, I'm sorry, John chapter 4, Jesus was compelled by, you know, to go to this place uh, to, to minister to this lady at the well. Yeah. Amen. 
And so he was compelled to go to this place. Normally the Jews walk around this place uh, because uh, the Jews and the uh, Samaritans didn't mix. They, they had hatred towards each other. And so, and so it, was, uh, it was Samaria that he, they went to. And, and so he was there at the well. And this lady was there, you know, at the well too to get some water. And then Jesus, you know, had the audacity, knowing that he, she, he shouldn't even be speaking to a Samaritan because he was Jewish. You know, Jesus, does, Jesus doesn't have a precious bone in his body. Amen. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? All people are important. Yes. Amen. All people, you know, all lives matter. Yes. Amen. All lives. Yes. God is interested in everybody. Right. All lives are important to God. Amen. Everybody's important. Hallelujah. Are you listening? There's nobody that God wants to leave out. Right. Are you listening to what I'm saying to, to, to you today? And so this lady, even though she was a Samaritan, even though the Jews had, you know, prejudice against the Samaritans, the Samaritans against the Jews, uh, Jesus says, hey, give me some water. <laughs> you, know, you know what she was trying to do? What Jesus was trying to do was he's trying to provoke her. And then she says, uh, you being a Jew, ask me for a drink of water? Yeah, I mean, you know. And then, uh, and then, you know, Jesus said, if you knew who I was, I would give you living water that you'd thirst no more. And she said, okay, I don't even want to go draw because it's a lot of hard work. Give me this living water. Right? And then, and I like this because Jesus, you know, he puts that carrot out there. You know, now he's going to draw her back in, you know, that carrot of that living water. And she said, you know, give me that living water. And he said, he said, okay, well, get your husband and come back and I'll get you some of that living water. And she said, I don't have a husband. Right? And then he said, well, you, 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 you're telling the truth. You don't have a husband. And you've had five men and the man that you're with, you had, or what did he say, five husbands? Did he say that? Five husbands and the one you're with isn't even your husband. And you know what? Like, you know, you think that he was reading the gossip column. It, it, uh, or the, the Facebook, her Facebook account, right? You know, because, you know, it's all about gossip, right? And, uh, and they didn't have Facebook back then. So, so, uh, so it, it was Jesus face-to-face -face with God. <laughs> you know, and that's what it is today. We're face-to-face -face with the Lord. And so he, he revealed to her a known fact that he, he had no, he should not have any idea about her life. Right. What happened was this, this opened her heart to reveal to her that God is watching her. Yes. Do you know God is watching us? Amen. You know, we don't get away with anything. Yes. You know, we, just because other people don't know what's going on in, your, in, in some of our dark lives, God knows what's Amen. going on. Yes. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Don't think that God doesn't know. God knows all things. Yes, he does. His eyes are out and looking at everything, the good and the evil. Yes. So, so God is watching all things. Right. Amen. Amen. And so we got to be aware of that. So, so Jesus was saying this to this lady not to condemn her. Some say, well, that was bringing condemnation on her. No, he was saying to her, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. And I'm telling you, I'm going to show you how to love God in the way you should worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. Remember that song? Looking for love in all the wrong places. I wish I could sing, but, but, but a lot of times we're looking for love. We're looking for acceptance. We're looking for validation through Facebook, through everybody. Oh, I got a thousand members. You know, I, I, you know, uh, you know I, 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 people know who I am, right? But you need to be looking for your validation from God. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? And, and sometimes we try to get validated by people. Amen. But we need to get validated by God. And so, so Jesus was operating in the word of knowledge to reveal truth to her, now she, she said, I know you're a prophet. I know you're speaking truth. And she became the evangelist in that town that brought many people to believe in Jesus. Yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? Well, what is the importance of these spiritual giftings? It can change, miraculously change lives. Amen. It can cause people to make U-turns. It can, are you listening to what I'm saying today? People might be going the wrong way and you can U-turn. God's a U-turn God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and he, 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 bam, that's it. I'm not going that way anymore. I'm going God's way. Amen. A word of knowledge can, can, can move you to the next level in God. 
Are you listening to what I'm saying today? And so we, we understand that. And also, in a word of knowledge, it can bring correction. It can bring um, revelation that God is, you know, knowing what's going on in your life. But a lot, sometimes a word of knowledge can bring a correction into us. And that correction will help us get back on the right track. Because if, if, if I'm doing something that's hindering me from my blessing, I want God to tell me. That's right. I mean, I, I don't want to be like, God, why am I still in the wilderness? Why am I still, you know, why am I, why am I not moving forward? Well, if, I, if, if, there's, if I'm not moving forward, I want God to tell me why. Amen. I don't want to be going around the ugly mountain because the mountain's pretty when you first go around it. And the second time, it's not that bad. But after about the 30th time around the mountain, you're like, this mountain's ugly. I mean, I'm done with, with a little bit of sickness. I'm done with a li little bit of poverty. I'm, I'm done with broken relationships. You know, you know you, you, that mountain starts getting a little uglier. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? And I don't want, I, I want to be, see, see, what makes the mountain is beautiful. You know, what, you know what makes the mountain beautiful? It's when you're on top of it. When you're looking down. That's what, that's what makes the mountain. And that's what the word of knowledge will bring. It will bring you a perspective, a higher perspective. You got it? And that will bring you into a place where God wants to bring you into. So, so we know this, that the word of knowledge operated in Peter's life. And we know that. And, and Peter, even Peter and John, when they were going in, the, uh, in Acts chapter 3, when they were going to the temple, right, there was a guy that was begging for alms. Remember that? And then, then remember Peter said, uh, uh, silver and gold I have none. Right? Silver and gold, I have none. Uh, Peter wasn't pr promoting poverty. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? People want to read anything. See, we don't supposed to have anything. We're not supposed to have any gold or silver. Uh, why not? Why? Uh, God made gold and gold is good. Amen. And, shouldn't, and, and, and aren't we co-heirs with God? Uh, amen. So it's, not, it's okay to wear a gold bracelet. Amen. Hallelujah. Especially if you give one to the pastor. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, we'll continue. Uh, are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? That, that gold isn't bad. Prosperity isn't bad. But we can go off. See, the devil fights two things. He fights the gifts of the Spirit. The devil doesn't want us operating in tongues and the gifts of the Spirit. And he fights prosperity. If I preach too much on prosperity, I'm all about money. No, God's all about prosperity. Are you listening? He's all about expanding the kingdom. That's right. And if we can expand the kingdom, then we're, then, we're, then we're bringing more people in. That means more people come in to the kingdom, the quicker Jesus is coming back. The devil knows this. That's why he's trying to slow it all down. Right? So Peter, when he was there, can I get out of my chair for a second? When Peter was there and John, and they were going to the, the gate, and they see this man begging for alms, and he said, silver and gold I have none, but what I do have... I give unto thee, rise and walk in the name of Jesus. I, I believe that one translation says he perceived that this man had faith. Yes. He yes. perceived this man. In other words, the spirit of God revealed to him, this man has enough faith to get up. God. And so he, so he was operating in the gift. And he said, I perceive you got faith. Silver God, I have none, but what I do, rise and walk in the name of Jesus. And the guy, brought, I don't know how long he was there in that state begging, but it changed his life. He got up started walking, then he started leaping, yeah. and he started jumping, yeah. and he started praising God in the, in, in the church. In other words, the church wasn't just a dry, boring service as always. In other words, God invaded the church that day. In other words, people started saying, well, God must be real. God is doing something. God is moving. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? We serve a living God. We, it's, my Bible is called the Living Bible. The Holy Bible. It's the, it's the word that works. It works. I pray for people. I see God do miracles. Not because I'm that great, because God confirms his word with signs following. So, so, so Peter just stepped out. And, and then, and then there's, there's different... Uh, remember Peter also had the word with, with, with uh, Sapphira? Uh, who is that? Um, Ananias, that's right. Ananias and Sapphira. Remember that he, he wouldn't know what was in their hearts. They were giving an offering in church. And he said, why did the, why did the devil fill your hearts to lie to the Holy Spirit? That's right. Now, you can only get that revelation from God. That's right. Amen. 
I mean, Peter didn't check up on the books to see how much that land was valued at. He didn't go behind the scenes and figure it all out. No, the Holy Spirit gave Peter, the Apostle Peter, a revelation of where that guy and that gal was at. And that was instant judgment. Yes. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? I don't want to cross the line. Amen. I don't want instant judgment. And some may say, well, they were unsaved people anyway. You know, I don't know. Some say they, they ended up in heaven anyway. They just got, they got taken out early. You know, I don't know. Amen. I don't know if they're in heaven. I don't know if they're in hell. It's not, none of my business. That's between them and God. But all I know is I don't, I, I, I don't want judgment. Amen. Like that. Right. I want correction. Hallelujah. And so God will correct us and bring us into a place where we can U-turn our life. And the word of wisdom in, prophet, in a prophetic word will cause us to move to the next level. It may even, God may even reveal to you something he wants you to do that you're not even aware of. And then you pray for confirmation. But a lot of times, prophecy works with what already God is telling you to do. Every once in a while, maybe something you may not be aware of, and then you have to have confirmation. Amen? God may just be trying to reveal it to you, and we're just not hearing him. So he may give a prophetic word. And then you have to confirm it with, with the leading of the Holy Spirit, and possibly with confirmation with, through another source. Does this help anybody today? You know, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying today? And, and so, and so we got we got to, in spiritual giftings, just because somebody says something to you, go move to Africa and live in a hut. It may not be God if that was never in your heart to do that. Now, if it's Hawaii, no, I'm no, that's that's another sermon. But if it's going on a cruise, I could say yes and amen to that, brother. Prophesy me about going to a cruise. Are you going to be paying for it for me? <laughs> if they prophesy, let them pay for it. Amen. And uh, uh, so are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? Whatever, whatever God moves, we got to have an open heart to listen. And prophecy is not really for direction in the New Testament. In the Old Testament it was, but it, it was, it's a confirmation of what God's already moving on your heart. Okay, so that's when you have a word of knowledge of where you're at, or it could be a word of wisdom, a, a, a knowledge of where you're at and where, where God wants you to go. I remember that, uh, i got to close this down, I remember that um, the Lord was revealing to me, I thought I was called to be an evangelist. And, you know, I kind of like the idea about, you know, the dating. You know, you know, there's some men that like to date, but they don't want to marry. You, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and so and I like the idea of dating the church, because you can get to see a, a different church every time, you know, going around different, you know, there's itinerant ministers. These people go around and preach in different churches. So you have a different congregation and all that. And so an evangelist does that. You know, maybe they will raise up a tent or maybe they will preach in, in churches. And so I thought I was called to be an evangelist. But, but God was calling me to be a pastor. And I never wanted to be a pastor because I thought pastors were boring. That was my idea of a pastor. They're boring. They got, their, they got one church. They don't fly around anywhere. But, but that's not really true. Some pastors fly around everywhere. Amen. You know, they, they, they got, they're multi-talented pastors. But I just bought into that lie. But I remember that, a, but that some, a student revealed to me, she said, you know, the Lord revealed to me that you were going to be a pastor. And it was confirming to me that. And, uh, but, uh, but she knew it ahead of time. But she said, I couldn't tell you because uh, the Lord told me you want to accept it. Wow. But after the Spirit of the Lord talked to me, like, I want you to go back to Virginia Beach and help the pastor and, 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 and you know, become a pastor. I said, okay. Uh, and then she confirmed it. Right. And so and so because I was in the evangelist group. But he said, I knew you were in the evangelist group. And, but see, even if we're in the wrong group, God still can get us into the right. Yeah, that's right. I'm preaching today. Even though we might be in the wrong group. Even though we may not be in the right place. Even, but God still can get us to where we need to go. See, I was like, I'm an evangelist. Uh, yeah, baby. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm, not, I, I'm, a, I, I'm an evangelistic pastor. That's better. I like to motivate. Amen. And so, and so, and so God is using my giftings. And, and he's using me to, to hopefully move you to the next level. 
And so we know that Peter said that. And, and then we know that Simon the sorceress, you know, where, the, where he, he was there and he was seeing people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he asked Peter if he could buy the gift. Remember that? And Peter said, you know, I perceive in your heart there's bitterness. There, you, are you hearing what I'm saying today? There, there's, there's things in your heart that's not right with God. And you know what? Only the God can tell you. To tell, it's not the gift of suspicion. That's right. Amen. It is a holy gift. And what was God trying to do? Get, get Simon Sorcerer. He was trying to reveal some truth to get him to turn around, to get him to repent, to get him to move forward. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And so these giftings are important. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. See, somebody can give you a word of wisdom, a prophetic word, but sometimes these prophecies, uh, they're conditional on what we do. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God could be making some of you a millionaire, but you got to get up off your duff and do something. Okay. He may not just drop it down on you through the lottery. He may give you an idea to move on. Oh, man, I'm preaching today. He may, get, he may tell you, I want you to start flipping houses. I want you, what? Buy a house, fix it up, sell it, make money, you know, because I want you to fund the kingdom. See, see but you got you to learn. You got to go in and go to a class. You're going to have to go to YouTube and figure out how to flip houses. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? You're going to have to get some knowledge. But God's just not going to throw it all in our lap. It's, here it is. No, you're going to have to do some due diligence. Yes, Are you listening to what I'm saying today? Because, see, God, see, we, he's going to work with us. Yes. But you're going to have to learn how to do some things. So, so you, the more you start doing something, the more confident you become. Yes, you know, I used, to, I used to be up here preaching, and, uh, you know, I, I, I used to deal with insecurities and, and, and things of that nature. Sometimes it was even hard for me to look at you guys. Because <laughs> I, I didn't know, you know, the Bible says don't look at their faces. <laughs> Because you got, I say something wrong. I hit the wrong note when I'm singing. <laughs> you know, uh, are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? I remember I used to preach and I would look over the congregation. And, and this one lady came to me and said, why do you do that? I said, what do you mean? Why do you, why when you preach and you don't really look at us, you look over like you're looking at a thousand million people. I said, because I am. <laughs> I'm imagining a million people in this place. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? But you guys are just as important as the million. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? I'm telling you, God's raising up you guys. You guys are growing in God. You're becoming stalwart in God. Amen. Not Star Wars, but stalwart. Amen. Which means that you're maturing in God. You're becoming somebody that God can count on. Do you believe that today? You're moving into the prophetic. And I'm telling you, you, you don't, you, you, you'll be so amazed when you do it. You, you, you'd be so amazed when you just say just the right thing and you're like, what made me say that? The Holy Spirit? How come it affected that person and they started crying? Well, that could be two reasons, but we don't go there because you're corrupt. <laughs> because you shouldn't have said something. You said the wrong thing, but, but you may be saying the right. Are you listening? Sometimes I say the wrong thing. I, I, I joke around. We've got to be very careful about joking around because it can hurt people's feelings. Amen. And I got to be very careful about it because I tend to tease. I have that teasing, you know, uh, uh, personality. I like to kind of tease a little bit, but I got to watch that. Amen. Because it can hurt people. Amen. So we don't want to hurt people. We want to help people. Yes. Right. And so we help people by being led by the Holy Spirit, by saying a word. The Bible says uh, words that, that, that touch people's lives are like apples of gold yes. in the right setting. Right. And so when God moves on our heart and we have a pure heart, our heart's pure. See, if you're going to move in the prophetic gifts, I'm going to close here. You got to stay pure. Amen. You got You got to keep your life pure. You got to You got to stay away from from anything that's impure. Amen. If you're going to really move in the true gifts of the Holy Spirit, because the devil can do false gifts. Amen. And you can get people that are not living right with God. They can operate in wrong gifts that seem legitimate, but they may not be legitimate. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And they can operate in false gifts and they're living a life that's, that's not um, uh, disciplined. And they're doing things and so, and, and so wrong spirits can move in 
and do some things and they think they're operating in the spirit of God, but they're operating in a wrong spirit. Is this helping anybody today? That's why you got to stay pure if you're going to move in these gifts. You got to always keep your heart pure. You can't, you can't allow jealousy or bitterness or anything like that into your hearts. So you can operate in the gifts, you know, more clearly. Amen. Because the devil is a counterfeiter. And he will counterfeit every gift that God has put out there. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He counterfeits gifts. You may say, what? Yeah, he can counterfeit. And he, you say, well, then I don't want to pray that I get a gift because I don't know if it's a counterfeit gift or a true gift. If you're walking in purity with God, it's a true gift. Amen. Amen. Yes. If you're not walking in purity with God, then it's, it can be a false gift. Right. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? One person had something that sounded like tongues, but it wasn't tongues. And the minister said, this person isn't speaking in tongues. And they found out the person wasn't even saved. They just had a wrong spirit. Right? And they got them saved and they got them really baptized in the Holy Spirit. But it wasn't true giftings. Is this helping anybody today? Because God, listen, I don't know about you, but I, I, I want the genuine article. Amen. I want the real McCoy. I don't, I don't want to operate anything false. I want to operate in what's true. Amen. Holy. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Yes. And when we keep our, our hearts right... And we walk in holiness and purity. I'm telling you, God's going to be able to use us more and more. That's the reason why sometimes God's not using us, because there's too much world in the church. Oh, I'm preaching it today. Oh, too much world in the church. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? You know, the Bible says this. i got to close. My Lord. I said to my wife, I'm going to get this done in 30 minutes. And look what time. It's almost 12 o'clock. Lord Jesus, help me. She said, every time you say it's going to go short, you always go long. Okay, I'm going to stop saying that. And um, where was I at? <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. Glory to God, I love this lady. i got to close. But I, I had a good point. What was I going to say? Well, I guess I'm going to close. I wanted to close on a good note. I need a drummer up here. Ch -ch -ching! Oh my God. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have one of these days where it's the pastor's roast, right? Where you can just roast the pastor, right? You ever seen those things on TV? Amen. They, they roast the people, amen. Glory to God. Well, you know, people uh, like Taylor keeps the pastor humble. Glory to God. And we need some humility, amen. I need to stay humble, amen. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Father, I just thank you. Oh, for helping me cut this uh, sermon short. Amen. And Father, I just thank you for every precious person here today. I thank you for those watching online. And God wants to invade our lives. He wants to invade your lives. And he wants you moving in a greater dispensation of his grace. And if that's you today, maybe you're here in the audience or you're watching online. And you, you, there's areas in your life you need to let go of. There's, there, you're, 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 you're playing in the world. Uh, there's a scripture that says that my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and repent and turn from their wicked ways. And, you know, some of us, and you may say, I don't have wicked ways. Are they worldly ways? Are we more into the world and entertainment than we are into God? Or is Hollywood more important to us and what's going on in Hollywood than, than what, what's going on in the Bible with God's superstars? So if that's you today and you know you're just too caught up in the world and you're even a Christian, well, you need to, and maybe caught up in Facebook and caught up in all this stuff, the, you know, the glitz and the glamour. Maybe you need to repent. Maybe you never received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Today is the day of salvation. So if that's you today and you know you need to turn away from some areas in your life that's hindering God's blessing on your life, then I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to totally commit to God today. Say, dear God, I believe, Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Today, Jesus, I make you my Savior and I'm making you Lord of every part of my life. Jesus, I declare you as Lord and Heavenly Father, Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.